and welcome everybody to the uh, April recommission meeting. Uh, today we have, it's gonna, it's supposed to be a, a relatively short meeting. There are a few things that I spoke to Carolyn, our chair, about uh, wanted to make sure we cover for the April. We, we do have some things cooking in recreation coming up as we're approaching the summertime. Uh, you all have a copy of the agenda. Uh, I want to begin by first uh, uh, checking on April minutes. I, I Actually, can do that again. Thank you. Um, Carolyn, do you want to take over the introduction piece? Um, let's see. What do I need to talk about? That's the that's just the uh, minutes and the and the open for public comment. Okay, <laughs> the first. Um, so approval of minutes. Uh, they we all received them. We all read them. Is everyone okay with them? Any any changes? Okay, so I make a motion that we approve the March minutes as they are. Anybody? I'll second. I'll second okay. that. Okay. Um, also, note taker. Do we have a note taker? Matt just Matt just yeah. volunteered to go again. Thank you, Matt. Glad you're here. May I may I also just say that uh, this came up. Uh, uh, Jean pointed it out uh, this week in email with me that uh, there is a gap in the in the published minutes online. Um, he reads, Andy just submitted January's today and we'll get that posted. Uh, there may be some, I, I don't remember, Jean, if you remember when the when the gap began online, I could have looked for that. But there was a long gap in there. Matt, have you been sharing with Marion? I think Marion would be the one that's posting the minutes here. Have we been sharing with Marion the minutes? Yes. Okay. But there was the last the last ones I think that were approved were for November last year. From November. Okay. Online they then, go back to June. So nothing in between. Yeah, nothing in between. I will uh, speak. Okay. I'll check with Marion and make sure that that we have all of the current ones updated. If you have those archived, and if I need those, I'll reach out to you and and post uh -huh. those on the town website. But those those minutes should be available here. Yeah, and January's never got approved. Uh, Jan uh, right, January's were the ones that Andy took. Those those had the the adjustments. And those, Andy just submitted those to Marion today. Okay. And last time I checked, the um, recordings weren't all up. So would you please see if you can find out where those are and get them posted? Okay. Thanks. Yes. Okay. So are we going to vote on the minutes or do we need to vote? Yes. March? We just did the March. Did we actually vote though? Uh, no. How, are there enough people here to do that? I guess we have. I, have, four. I haven't seen them, so I can't vote. So. The motion is seconded. Right. All in favor? Okay. Does that count as approved? I guess that counts as approved by majority. That's that's majority present. If we need a fourth for a for a true majority, then. Can wait till How about this, I move. I move that we table that vote until the middle of the meeting when Andy is here. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. That will give us. That will give us a majority. That will give us a true majority. Okay. Okay. So moving on to pickleball. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sanjay wants to play pickleball. <laughs> you look happy. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, I, there's a lot whatever of going you, like, on. Like whatever a person feels about pickleball, how can you not smile when you hear someone say the word pickleball? <laughs> right? I mean, right. <laughs> I make a motion that we change the name from pickleball to something else. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this that's why David and Amy are here. So how can Amy we... is always here. David is certainly here to feel some of those. And I will bring them aboard here okay. as we start this piece. 
Um, I will say that we are moving in a direction. I appreciate the fact that Carolyn has been a, as a chair, she has taken on some of the responsibility uh, of, of speaking to members of the community that have been pushing for this. Uh, and doing some of the legwork to try and find some alternative plans and trying to put on the on the table some some means of trying to move this process forward. Uh, I don't think we are stuck. I've said that before. I don't think we're stuck in a space right now, but we do. There's there's money on the table that was given in a previous cycle, and we want to try and make sure that we are uh, our best effort to to uh, making good on that. We're still looking, we're still aggressively looking for a site, looking for the forever site. I will just say that our conversations on the agenda here, we're, we're looking at, at uh, management of the temporary courts, which are at Mill River right now. We're looking at developmental site options with different choices for where we're going. That's the conversation that we're having at Town Hall. Uh, uh, it's a conversation that we're having with the various departments that are responsible for making this happen. And there is some issue about costs that are going to come up here also. So if there, are, if there are any initial comments or conversations about any of those pieces, you can hear hear that before I I Dave and Amy to the uh panelists. Go ahead. Ray, um yes. could you could you give us an up to the minute on the temporary? courts and the net situation and all that? Yes, uh, the temporary courts right now, we have had uh, we've had some people reaching out about access to that court, which we expected now that the, now the weather is is nicer. We put those temporary lines in the Mill River in the in the fall, late fall. Uh, I just wanted to get lines down and see if people wanted to come out there and use it. It was a sort of experiment to see if people had nets could bring out there. I have a, a portable net that I'll be able to move out to the Mill River site now. We've had people reaching out to us about scheduling, about reserving or scheduling pickleball times there. Saturdays, we've had community interest about, about how much time can we have during the day. If I bring my nets, can we, can we do it this way? Can we run some instructional clinics out there if people are, are interested? That part of it is good. We haven't had any conflicts yet between tennis and pickleball that has been brought to my attention to our attention here. But I think there is a little bit of anxiety from some of the members of the, of the pickleball community in particular about not wanting to step on toes over there. And we just wanna make sure that if we're there, that we that, that we don't go out there and then realize that there is a clash here. Right now it is first come, first serve. People who get there and can put their nets up, can use that of the two tennis courts there. One of them is taken by two pickleball courts. If somebody gets there and shows up and is playing pickleball in that court, then there's one tennis court there. We haven't seen that conflict yet, but certainly that could arise. And that's why we are going to be monitoring that but basically informally by moving, moving over there, by touching base with people who are using it, we are gonna be uh, reaching out to the people who are out there. Carolyn. So I, I noticed the other day that the courts, the gate is open, does that stay open? Yes. So anybody who wants to play with their own equipment can go anytime right now. Yes, and, and we and reserved, we reserve so, the right to be able to close that down and set a schedule over there. But but right now, because it's not, it hasn't been a clash of cultures. We haven't uh, we haven't said that these this time is specifically for pickleball, this time is specifically for tennis, because we want to see if that comes up organically. Okay. And your plan for dropping off nets or having them available? Have not have not finalized that yet, but uh, our our vision is to try and is to try and bring over say three days a week and bring it out and drop it off. It just came in on Friday uh, okay. to bring it over and drop it off say noon to three or go over there from ten to one or something and drop the nets off and collect them back at the end. If people need to extend that, they could call our office. Uh, but 
the issue is that we don't have any way of establishing collateral or having people come over here and pick a net up and go over there. Uh, we would, we're trying to publicize it on our Facebook account, which doesn't reach nearly enough people, but we would like to be able to post signs. Uh, Jose already working on some on signage for the courts to let them know that there will be public play available when are available and we can set those times as this is this is going to be if nobody's there then the, the the nets can just stay off to the side yeah i guess i have kind of a maybe i'm just a naive question so the the can you you, you don't play the pickleball just with the tennis nets no why, why is that uh it's a <laughs> It is a different, uh, it's a different sized court and a different size net. The net in, in pickleball is a little bit shorter. Lower. Low, it's lower. Uh, uh, the, the, so you can't, you can't just play on part of the tennis court using the part of the tennis net. If you were it's desperate the enough, court you, is lower. If, if you were desperate enough, you could, and it was the only net that was there, you could. It's not pickleball. So you're suggesting like a temporary net that just sits on the side. And yeah, we would how deliver. Does, how it. does that? How does it? How does that like anchor itself to the ground so that it creates the correct tension? It has a little bit of weight on the on the feet of the net that allow and it. That, to, and that that that's standards. enough. That's enough. Yeah, it's it it does have enough. It's sturdy enough that it could. It could stay still in, in a windy day. There's enough of a, a sort of a, a base on it. There's enough of a weighted base on it that it won't fly around. Um, so, so your idea is that those are just going to sort of sit on the side of the tennis court and then someone who shows up, because there's not really people reserving it for tennis, are there? Is there? Correct. Is it, so, so people just, it's a, it's the courts are first come, first serve. Um, and if somebody comes there and wants to use it for pickleball, they just pull the pickleball nets into the middle of the court, Correct. play pickleball, and then leave. And then when someone comes and shows up for tennis, they put the pickleball nets on the side of the court. Correct. So, and you're just sort of relying on honesty that nobody's going to like pick up the pickleball court and tennis net and take it and play in their driveway. That right now is our risk. Um... Yes, we are we are banking on the fact that nobody will take it with them. The alternative would be to put it on a chain and wheels and let them chain it to the fences and drag it out. And I don't like that feel as much. If uh, if it's a day, I'm hoping that that doesn't that that deters folks from just going in there and taking what they what they want. We do there is a precedent. We do that with other things in our department where where people use our facilities or use our equipment without that are outdoors being, yeah uh and okay what happens is yeah i guess i guess if, if one gets stolen then the next time you have to attach have it with a cable it. or a chain yes and so that's that is a management situation if there are people out there we would like to we would like to uh we it's an, a and do, is, do, do you feel like the 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 double sets of lines is interfering at all or people are not people are fine with the two sets of lines being on the court it is definitely interfering with tennis the lines the lines are too thick for pickleball right now and we've heard that feedback and it just it's sort of for that shared court the the uh tennis players who are trying to use it it's confusing for them to see their own lines the pickleball lines uh, Sort of, sort of make the tennis lines a little bit more irrelevant. Are they in a different color? Slightly They're in yellow. Yeah. Yellow and okay. white. Okay. Okay. So, right. And so, uh, are there any other questions about the temporary site, Carolyn? Uh, actually, I was just raising my hand to move on to the development site options because that's closely tied to this. Got it. And, and so I'm going to bring in, now I'm going to bring in both David and Amy, if either or both of them would like to uh, contribute to this piece, because this is where we're getting into the next steps, which is getting out of 
my management and into some of the information that we've been going over. Both of them have been involved in the conversation. Sanjay. I think ahead. Andy had this up first. So oh, I'm Andy, sorry. Andy, Andy, no, Andy. that's fine. Yeah, I just wanted to say I was here. I'm sorry, I got here about five minutes ago. And I'm okay. yeah. eating a little bit, so I'm going to turn the video off. But thanks. Okay. Fine. Thank, thanks for being here, Andy. Okay, thanks, Ray. So, so just about the courts. Um, it uh, Anyway, just to say it out loud, just, and I'm sure you will, make sure that the pickleballers and the tennis players feel like they're being treated the same, right? So I get it that like the pickleballers, they feel new. They're worried about the tennis players getting angry at them. They're calling you and asking them, can we reserve times or this or that? But since tennis has never had reservations there, right? We don't want to wind up in a, in a situation where tennis players show up and the pickleballers say, well, we reserve the court, right? And it's just, we, you just need to make clear, it could be a very simple sign or it could just be word of mouth that it's, it's open play. And yes. this isn't Prospect Park or Central Park and there's yes. no membership card and there's no hourly limit or anything like that. And, um, and just as long as everyone feels like they're being treated the same, I think I'm hopeful that it'll work out. I think one thing um, to mention that I'm not sure is clear here is there, I don't think they can play tennis on the pickleball courts anymore because the net's not there and the courts are separate. So people can play tennis and pickleball at the same time. Is that clear? Say that again. The, the, they're both set up right now. You can there can be oh. tennis on one court and pickleball on the other two courts. Um, and oh, so you have you have one one court dedicated to tennis and the other yeah. court dedicated to pickleball. Right. The other court has net. the other the ten the uh, the other tennis court has two pickleball courts on it now, and I don't think there could be tennis there. That's because the, is there not a net? Is there not a tennis net there right now? I don't I think the tennis net, I think the tennis net is up. Oh, and that's Amy's right. Because it divides. I'm elevate Amy and David yeah. right now. Yeah, it divides I'm pretty, the house. I'm pretty sure the tennis net is up on both of the courts. Is that right? Okay. It um, has been for most of the I thought, I thought they were. I'm up there three okay. or four times a week, and I'm pretty sure the for baseball, and I'm pretty sure the tennis nets, both tennis nets are up. Okay, so they could play tennis if if no pickleball people came. There would be two tennis courts. Correct. Okay. And if there are pickle, pick, pick, pickleball people there, there are still one tennis ball. Yes. Gary. Okay. Okay. I have promoted to panelists. Uh, we know them just for uh, introduction's sake. We have Dave Zomek and Amy Rizeki here. Uh, um, the next piece of this is to look at developmental site options. David, go ahead. Can you David, hear me? Yes, David. Yes. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I, I I didn't get a request to. Are are, you, are we going to do the video as well? Or are you? Did I not? Do I not have you as a video? Yeah. His still can, as a his still as an attendee with talking permitted. Okay, yeah, I can, I tried it. I'll change that right now. Yeah, send me another. I tried it like three times. Here we go. Here we go. Great. Thank. You. Got it. Okay. We see you. Okay. And so Dave, you that that's all you had your hand up for, right? Okay. Um Amy, are you in the same situation? No, I'm here. Okay, just making sure. Uh okay, so the next piece that we are looking at is the development of site options. Uh one of the things that is, I believe, uh be a concern for us moving forward is what we're doing with that long term, uh, our long term goal of finding pickleball a space of its own, finding them a space where we can program uh, 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 lessons, where we can do open pick, uh, do open pick up pickleball, where we can do camp work, where we can integrate it in with other uh, with other sort of similar activities. Um, We've talked about a lot of different sites here. I've introduced some of them to the commission before. We've talked, 
I've talked to Carolyn and, and uh, at some extent about options that we have and some of the things that we're working on here. Uh, there have been a lot of really creative uh, uh, proposals being brought up by citizens, by commissioners, by by town uh, by town employees. Uh, there have been a lot of sort of directional sort of pieces that are going in there, and I I want to basically ask if there is any energy from anybody in the first of all any open energy for people here as to where we have looked, what's on the table, and where we can try and develop here. Uh, is there is there any, I know Carolyn has had some conversations here, but if there's anybody here who has a, any general feedback, any general questions about where we are and what we're doing. I can start, I can start there. Questions for me, questions for Dave. What are the, what are the main locations you're considering right now? Um, right now, uh, we are looking at uh, uh, the extending the, the the temporary home at Mill River into a cooperative uh, tennis and pickleball, or potentially making that entire thing pickleball, but using those tennis courts where the temporary courts are right now. And some uh, either extending and making pickleball space in connection with the tennis court that exists there or turning that into 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 pickleball there's some interest in developing long term uh, uh the the sites at groff park there's a site at groff park that we've discussed up on the upper fields on the back of the upper fields there is some interest in developing the cow fields up in north amherst uh the open the open space by the library development and turning that into pickleball space uh, there's been some interest in using uh, Kiwanis over on Stanley Street and building there as a site away from uh, away from uh, the, the the beat that the other ones are on. Uh, uh, those are the four. Am I forgetting one, please? Mil well, Mill River has a couple of possibilities, I think. And, but well, David will be able to tell us more about that. And so the, what just came up this week was the idea of, of perhaps even moving not just on those tennis courts, but is there other space at Mill River that, that would be available? The, the original proposal was to use the second parking lot, the first parking lot when you move in to the left, you come into Mill River. Uh, okay. uh, for a variety of different reasons, we didn't like that, we being many of the people involved in making this decision for a variety of reasons that didn't fit perfectly, despite the fact that it worked well in some cases, but that technically could be another option that we would be looking at because it's space that was was entered into the proposal, but there's Mill River hosts a few potential proposed sites. Um, Dave. I'm happy. I think Amy and I are happy to jump in whenever Anytime. appropriate. Anytime. So why don't why don't I start and then I'll turn it over to Amy um, because she's been working with uh, Ray and and uh, Jason Skeels, our town engineer, on on a few of the sites. But um, I guess what I wanted to start with saying is we are 110 percent committed to building pickleball courts in Amherst, and I think our our working group of staff and I met with Carolyn last Thursday or Friday just to chat a little bit about where we are. We're 100, you know, we're 100% we're uh, you know, committed to doing, making the courts happen. We are, we, I think most of us also feel like with the, with the explosive growth in popularity of pickleball that this might be uh, the first of a couple of different locations. So I don't want people, I know there's a tendency to kind of lock in and say, oh, we're gonna put pickleball courts here um, wherever that might be, but I, I think we probably in the end are going to have courts in a couple of different parts of, of town. The history a little bit on this, and I was talking with Carolyn about it last week, is, you know, I think the group that uh, developed the, the CPA proposal, um, for whatever reason, um, kind of locked in, I might say, with the most respect for that group, a little prematurely on Mill River, and after staff did um, after that proposal was well on its way to CPAC, 
Um, I know I chimed in kind of at 11.59 and said, please, 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 let's not lock in on Mill River. And the reason I did that was part of my job and, and particularly Amy's job uh, is to really look with, with us, with Ray and other department heads to say, what are all the layers of, of a decision that go into where things go, whether it's a building, whether it's a road, whether it's an intersection or whether it's a recreational facility. And so um, as we look at Mill River, you know, my really quickly, the first thing I think of is the growth that is happening in North Amherst and the growth that will happen in North Amherst. And so I'm really cautious about real estate at Mill River. And for a variety of reasons, as Ray suggested, the area to the left, well, first of all, on a very busy day at Mill River, there is no parking. Because that was one of the first things I heard is there's plenty of parking lots at Mill River. It's not a problem if we take up space for pickleball, two, three courts, shouldn't be a problem, maybe four. Well, if you go down on a busy day at Mill River when everything is hopping, there's virtually no parking there. So we looked at, as, as our group got together, we began to look at, and our engineering staff looked at all the parking lots. We did look at them. We looked at the parking lot to the left. We looked at the main parking lot over toward the Mill River between the pool and the Mill River. And we looked at the existing um, tennis courts to even see if they could be expanded. And our job as planners and engineers is to kind of look at all the factors, um, the tree cover, the existing pavement, the drainage is, a, is an important factor, how close we are to the Mill River, the floodplain, all of those factors that allow for, for uh, pickleball courts to be permitted to be built and they would have to be permitted to be built. And Mill River is a challenging site because it was built pre-wetlands and pre-floodplain pre uh, requirements. So everything is regulated within 200 feet of the Mill River. So putting new facilities, putting new pavement, which a pickleball court is within 200 feet of the Mill River is difficult, if not impossible, and probably not a direction we wanna go. So bottom line is staff looked at the left-hand parking lot, we looked at the existing pickleball courts, and I think we have a hybrid solution there now where we're sharing that back court. And then we began to look at other uh, places in town where pickleball might go. And I think our most recent meeting uh, with, with Amy and Ray and, and Jason Skeels, and there may have been others there, um, we, we really landed on the feasibility of putting pickleball courts at Kiwanis Park on Stanley Street. And, as we look at the site analysis, we look at, you know, ease of building, cost of building, the budget, the timeline, are there wetlands? And Kiwanis Park makes a lot of sense for doing two or three pickleball courts because it's high, dry, flat. It has existing parking. The one drawback that we can think of is it doesn't have permanent restrooms, but we've talked about putting restrooms at Kiwanis in the, in the past. We just haven't done it yet. So that's the one major drawback there. So in the in the short term, it would have to be kind of a porta potty situation until we could potentially build um, restrooms there. So I think I'll stop. But so there's a couple of years of thinking that went into this, and we're we're kind of we want to move toward, you know, deciding on a site and beginning the permitting design and permitting process, and we think that can go fairly close uh, fairly quickly. I will say the site between that has come up recently between the end of the parking lot at Mill River and the baseball fields. Um, from a planning standpoint, I could not recommend that site. Um, it is very close to the Mill River. It is also one of the only green spaces left at Mill River for picnicking and large gatherings and informal play. Um, and I, I don't think putting permanent pickleball courts there um, makes a lot of sense from a long-term planning standpoint for recreation. So um, that is my my thought on that. Um, and I don't mean to rain on that parade, but uh, we we thought about that and we moved away from that some months ago. Um, so Amy, I, I don't know if I stole all your thunder, but if you want to talk about the if you want to talk about uh, specifically uh, anything to do with Kiwanis, that would be wonderful. You know, I know Jason Skeels has been looking at that. Yeah, I mean, I think you covered it pretty well. I I, I guess I would just kind of, I don't know if people have questions and I'm happy to answer questions about kind of how, how we came to these decisions or, you know, kind of some of the, 
some of the challenges that we're seeing. So just in terms of Mill River, do you, what's your feeling about the two pickleball courts on one of the tennis courts and making that permanent? Do you think that's realistic? We may have different opinions there. I, I, yeah, I was going to say, do you want to ask me or do you want to ask Dave? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll hear both. I'll, I'll stick my neck out before you, Amy, but I was very much in favor of exploring that. Um, I think it would be an interesting hybrid. I think I think there could be a dialogue between the tennis community and the and the pickleball community and and trying that out. We're really, you know, could it be done without large, you know, changes to the fence line or anything like that, and simply some resurfacing and some line line changes and and making that what is that the west side of the courts into into pickleball courts for a year? I realized that, and I think Sanjay alluded to it earlier is. We want to make sure we treat tennis and pickleball fairly in everything we do. My take was, yes, there are two courts there. They've been there since 1972 or whatever, two tennis courts. But there are also courts at the middle school um, and the colleges have courts. They're not all open to the public as, as all of our town courts are. But uh, is it time to consider maybe um, you know trying that for a year or two? But, but not all staff agreed with me on that. Yeah, I I think especially after you guys talked about it at the last meeting, I, I feel like one of the things I heard loud and clear from you guys was let's find a space specifically for pickleball and not, you know, kind of take something away from an established sport to create space for another established sport. Um, and that's essentially what that would have been doing, taking a tennis court away from tennis players. Mm -hmm. If we were going to make the, that a permanent court, the, the net would have gone out, you know, pickleball nets would have gone in and it would no longer be a tennis court and there would only be one there. Um, and I, I just kind of thought for that reason, um, we should try and find a site that can be there for pickleball and have multiple, you know, multiple courts. And, you know, maybe in the future, the ability to add a couple more courts if, you know, we keep seeing the growth and the demand that, um, that we're seeing, so. Yeah, I think I think where I was coming from is you said we'd end up in the future with pickleball in multiple locations in town. If you're suggesting Kiwanis in sort of southeast in Amherst, and then if there's two pickleball courts in Mill River, then that kind of creates a jig, jig um, you know, courts in different places. I think what I heard from staff and Amy and Ray were we're both on the same page on that, which was not to take away that court at Mill River. I think our goal here was to try to get pickleball courts built as quickly and efficiently as possible from here on out. Um, and again, budget is going to be a challenge. $120,000 seemed like it went a long way, but the, the whole um, building industry and cost have changed, but we're going to do the very best we can. But to your point, Matt, I think... Um, if we get pickleball courts, let's say we get them built, we get two or three, whatever we can afford built at Kiwanis, and then three, four years down the road, you know, pickleball, you know, continues to be as popular as it is, then we look again and we say, okay, geographically, where should we add pickleball courts? You know, Kiwanis, I look at Kiwanis as kind of mid midtown east, you know, but in the middle yeah. of the town, we're a long, narrow town. Um, so it's pretty it's close to Sanjay. It's equidistant from people in the south and people in the north. Um, and it's a little bit east as you go to Belchertown, but it's kind of in the middle of our town. But yeah, we may look three, four years down the road and say, oh, we need, you know, we need courts in the north or in the deep south. The other so your, your your feeling is that in terms of 120,000, you know, what can be built quickly, Kiwanis is the best bet. Yes. That's our thinking. Right. And I'll, would... to your point, though, Matt, um, Kiwanis isn't a site that's going to give us the ability to have six or eight courts in the future. It doesn't have the ability to have future build out. But unfortunately, the few places that do have the ability to have all of those, the cost even just to put two or three courts there is a lot more expensive because it's going to take either at Groff Park in order to get it there, getting it, you know, a long sidewalk to get it all the way to that location just increases the cost exponentially. Or at the cow pasture, there's not parking right there. 
And so it needs a parking lot and the courts and that all of a sudden just doubles the cost. So both Groff and um, the cow pasture are going to be great sites in the future. We would just need to bring together enough money. And yeah, like obviously it would be great to start with a couple of courts in the place where we could add on to additional. But you also think about stuff like baseball in this town that has, you know, it has sites throughout the town and people do use it throughout the town. So I don't think, um, I don't think getting a couple at say Kiwanis is. Um, yeah. Real, real quick before uh, I see your hand, Andrew. Um, uh, when we talk about a second site, when we talk about having a, a second site, Dave outlined a vision that could have pickleball in multiple places. Uh, some might not be you know discussable right now because they're involved in projects there be it the the Fort River and Wildwood uh sites be it the the War Memorial Pool be it there are a bunch of things that we just don't know right now what form they take in recreational space in those in those places so it's not that our our options now are going to be we're going to be limited to the options we have right now there could be other space that we look yeah. at in the future and thanks um so you know I, and Kiwanis makes sense for a lot of reasons i guess the one thing though that i would raise um so just in my history looking for fields to play sports on um is Kiwanis is like the dry field in town and so does it make sense to basically take a grass use that's dry and one of the only spots you can rely on to, to be able to access and and essentially convert that to a hard surface? Good question. Amy? Uh, uh, two, so two things on that. One, um, the space that we're looking at isn't currently a playing field. It's kind of that dead space between where the parking is and where the playing field is. So it's, yeah, at least it's not gonna be taking away playable space. Um, under the okay i guess playable for what though you relative to the to the softball diamonds or yeah i know that we would we were running lacrosse there and we were going pretty much up to the parking lot okay is it um, the space to the south of the parking lot or to the east of the parking lot next to the road it's to the south of the Just parking the lot where the big trees are we would and behind the, tree. the trees yeah, we would take down one or two of those trees and we would put the, the courts right behind that. Great. Do you understand that, Andy? Andy? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, I do. Um, I guess, you know, my, my point still remains that, uh, yep. you know, it's, it's a, is the highest and best use of that asset for a hard surface or for a grass surface? Nope. I'll, I'll think more I, throw out one of the other things that, you know, we've kind of been discussing in general and granted in a couple of weeks, we're going to know whether this is a reality or not, but we may be looking at, you know, the loss of some of the fields at um, the Fort River school for a couple of years, if they're doing construction there. Um, and because of that, um, we, we already, uh, my crews have put some drainage at Groff, but we're looking to try to install a bunch of drainage at Groff so that those fields can be, dried out a lot better because that's a great resource but it's wet pretty often and so kind of just looking forward a couple of years in the future we're we're thinking this might be something we have to do to um it help us make it through that so hopefully that would also make additional playing space for you guys as well um, yeah well i mean it's it's it could be any sport right that that's looking for for field and yeah. i guess the other thing is I love those trees at Stanley. Like that's something that I would say when we were using it, you know, on a hot day, that's where the, the parents were sort of camping out underneath those shitty trees there. So uh, it would be a bummer if those were to be lost. Um, again, like I know we're cost constraint. I, I get it that this makes sense from that perspective. I would love to see it at a different location. I mean, that like the cow fields, I don't know that they really can be used for anything else. I'm sure that's the most expensive option given what you've talked about in terms of planning for drainage. And potentially parking, but well, if we well, consider, part of, yeah, part of the challenge, Andy, as Amy alluded, the cow field because of the topographic changes there, the cow field is lower than Sunderland Road, 
So yep. any facility we make has to be completely ADA. So that means anyone in a wheelchair, a walker, with a, uh, any kind of mobility issue has to be able to get down, get down to the courts. That means adding sidewalks, drainage, parking. It, the cow field gets very complicated. I wanted to go back to something, and, and I guess I wanted to, we're, we're kind of focused in on, on Kiwanis a little bit, but I wanted to just maybe call everyone's attention. A couple of years ago, um, and I'm not sure if any of you were on the commission at the time, we had this group called the Downtown Recreation Working Group. And I would really encourage you on the town website is um, a study that was done by Weston and Sampson that has been referenced multiple times. And Andy, your comments that, um, you know, the Kiwanis field is, is one of the best and the highest and driest, you know, makes me sad really in, in many ways. I know, I know that to be true. We used to call it when my kids were playing, we called it the desert because it was so dry that it was hard as a rock and kids got injured there because it, it firms up and it's, it's hard. Um, but the Western and Samson group fundamentally said that we need to think about our fields differently. And this is what I would challenge you all to do, which is we, we probably should not be thinking about all these disparate fields in all these different places. I mean, this fundamentally was why I and some other folks, you know, including members of the commission, put forth the idea of a multi-purpose field, turf or otherwise at the high school. <laughs> so the, and to improve all the fields at community field, the middle school and the high school, regardless of what kind of field we decide to build inside the track. And I don't wanna go there tonight, but that is what Weston and Sampson leading professionals in the field said, put our money, our limited money into those fields, drainage, access, uh, places for, for people to watch the fields, ADA, all of those things. We have plenty of fields. They're just, as you all know, they're in not the greatest condition and we haven't had the resources to maintain grass fields. But the idea that we're going to improve golf, improve the cow field, improve Kiwanis, uh, you know, we've got some things on the horizon. One, as, as Amy alluded, we are going to spend, you know, if the vote goes through on May, May 2nd, um, we are going to spend a tremendous amount of money on the fields at Fort River School. Those will, you know, regardless, those would be some of the best fields in town when they are built. Likewise, I hope we move forward with improvements, for, uh, artificial turf or otherwise, at the high school. But the, I guess what I'm getting at is my belief is we need to centralize the resources and spend the money on the fields that make the most sense. And those are high school, middle school, community field, you know, we, I hope, learned a lesson from spending almost a million dollars at Wine Lane, and that field really didn't turn out to be as usable as we hoped, in part because the groundwater is so high down there. So I, I will, I will get off my soapbox there, but, but I encourage you all to look at that field study done by Weston and Sampson, and it really says, centralize our resources and focus our resources in the downtown area, so. Oh, yeah. Mr. Thank you for this. I like this. Makes a lot of sense, Dave. I appreciate it. Um, uh, any questions? Yeah, I will. I mean, I guess I can conclude just by saying I, I know we've been talking about this for a while. I know the people who've been who have their hearts set on developing a sort of a, a, a pickleball home here have been even more, you know, their their energy has been pretty, uh, has been has been pretty strong and, and patient for us here. I want to keep on moving in this direction. Dave said he's 100% interested in getting this. I'm 100% interested in making this a part because I think it does provide us with certainly an, an outreach into a really, really fast growing sport. It's a different way of looking at health and education for young people, especially in our connection with the, the, the population that it's growing the most with, which is seniors gives us a chance to be connected into the society in, into this community in, in ways that, that that I think are are exciting for me as the head of a department here. 
and so and so uh, you know it is a, a little bit of a pet project for me and trying to find a space that makes the most sense um I appreciate Dave and Amy being here and all along the way, folks from Town Hall and folks from DPW and our engineers being able to tell me no when I need to, when I'm getting excited about the pet project and saying, hey, we need to get this going, we need to, we need to get this going. Being able to say there, there are multiple factors involved in this is an important part of this. Uh, it's not a small project, it's a, it's a, it's a relatively large project that we're looking at at doing here and it has to fit with all those other pieces Ray, so i think i i was gonna if i could interject i think yes. Erwin and i talked on friday about maybe scheduling a time to sit down with i think there's some representatives of the pickleball folks if you will who put that proposal forward and i'd be happy to be there perhaps amy would too and we could talk through that you know uh um Kiwanis Park with them. As Amy said, I think the town engineers have a ton on their plates right now, I can tell you, but Jason Skeels, you know, he likes this project too. I think it's it's kind of a fun one, if you will, for him. And so in a couple of weeks, I think we'll have a, a, a deeper, deeper dive at looking at a conceptual design for Kiwanis Park. And we'd be happy to sit down, you know, if Carolyn could set it up with the pickleball folks and socialize it with them and also talk about why Mill River is more complicated than originally thought way back when a couple of years ago. But you know, we're we're ready to, we're kind of ready to launch on on Kiwanis if we can, you know, if the design works and and we would move forward with the the permitting for trying to get that going. So excellent. But we'd be happy to come back to report to you by your next meeting that we've met with the pickleball folks. We have a design, and hopefully, we're we have a green light to to move this forward. Sounds good. Very exciting. Thanks, David. I would also say that we we yes. have we have design money, and Ray has been so busy. We're all so busy, but we have CPA money. I think we have fifty thousand dollars. To look at um, speaking of Mill River, to look at the area near the pavilion. Uh, this was Nate Malloy and my and and I got this money from CPA maybe two years ago to look at the area. We realized that the playground and and the pavilion area and that area between Mill Two and the basketball courts. We had the wonderful new basketball courts, thanks to CPA and DPW for doing that. Um, and funding that, but we we do want to redo the playground there, which is quite old and out of date. And so, you know, look, we would look to you to come back and and work with you on some design ideas for that playground area, which is so popular but pretty dated now. So, just thought I would put that out there. Thank you, David. We're in that, and Carolyn's gonna. I'm trying to beat Carolyn to the punch on this. We are <laughs> over on the agenda, and that's fine. I think this is energy that, that we were expecting to spend in here. Uh, I would like to move on. I would, there are a couple of things I want to do first. One is to point everybody's attention. Gene did share the Weston and Sampson uh, event in the chat. If anybody wants to pull that out, if anybody is unaware of how to find that or where that is or what that looks like, Weston and Sampson is in the chat. Thank you, Gene. Um, the second thing is we have, uh, Andy has joined us and Yusuf has joined us. Yusuf, you are on our board as Sanjay. I have, Sanjay's. I have, Amos Sanjay, does anybody else have that? Yeah. Okay. Cause Yusuf, that's what Yusuf had emailed me and said he didn't receive Got the it. link. So I, I Got just it. passed my okay. along. Got yeah. it. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Um, uh, and so we do have the opportunity right now to, I'm going to move, at, do, I, I can move to re-vote, uh, move to uh, uh, approve the, the March minutes as I move Dave and Amy back into the panel. And thank you both if, if uh, as I move you back. So I'll make a motion again to approve the March minutes as they stand. We have a second. Okay, you have seconds. All in favor? Hands. Good. 
Okay. Sounds good. Jean can't vote, right? Or she can, but she didn't see them. Yeah, so. but she yeah I didn't she see where those are posted. I couldn't find those. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You wouldn't have. Okay. So I guess it's passed. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I can go and make this nice and breezy. Uh, for the pavilions and pools, Denise isn't here. I had put her on, I had invited her and then forgot to uh, check in with her today to make sure that she was coming. I sent her a late notice and uh, that'll be my fault. But uh, I can tell you pavilions are open. We have opened the uh, 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 Hill and Groff pavilions and that now, I, they're not open now, but we've set our opening dates for the end of this month, which is now. Uh, uh, Billions will be available. We've reduced the prices at at which one? At Groff, at the lower pavilion at Groff, because of the the state of that of that uh, uh, because of the state of the pavilion, we've we've dropped the cost there. But we have uh, sort of worked on our our packaging for those two pools, which is a bigger issue, and we'll we'll involve in our. Go ahead, Sanjay. Hi, Ray. Just regarding the pavilions, um, you may be aware of this, but over the course of the winter, there had been some, let's say, camping yes. at the Middle River Pavilion, and I just wonder if that is being addressed. It has been. Or already has uh, been, yeah. It, it has been. We've been. We've had a few agencies in town talking about that situation. Uh, when Carolyn and I went and did a site visit uh, last week, I did go over to the pavilion for the first time in a couple months, and we are going to need, I know DPW will be on, when they have to move the benches and everything, they will be on sort of straightening that up. I'll be on straightening that up, but but yes, we have been on that. Okay. Uh, multiple uh, agencies in town. So, I mean, general interest in both the the state of the pavilion and the well-being of the people who were needing to use it. Um, yes. More parochially, uh, I have it reserved for 10 o'clock this coming Saturday for 150 little leaguers, and it would I be will. very uncomfortable if I arrived and had to deal and had to address. A, send a send me a reminder. Situation. I'm jotting that down. Feel free to pester me this week about making okay. sure I'll, I'll double that, double out there just to make sure that DPW knows to do all that piece, and I'll take care of the managerial part of. Great. Thanks, Ray. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, the pools, uh, the opening dates are set. Uh, we are going to have the pools open for the public on 617 on June 17th is our set opening date. Obviously, there's some factors that could that could change that. That's mid-June. It's a it's a pretty early opening target there. Uh, Denise has been working hard to to build a lesson schedule and to build a a uh, uh, you know to put together it's not complete yet but to do a, a, a complete schedule for those first couple weeks. Of course, camp at war is is uh, is one of our concerns as we're building those camps. And question, Carolyn. Um, in the past. Mill has opened before war. It sounds like you're opening them both at the same time. We are. I don't know about that stagger. I haven't known if the. I, I didn't know that there was that stagger. Last year was my first one, obviously, uh, and war had its issues. I don't know if that was. Uh, uh, I don't know if that's out of design or out of what had like if if DPW tells me that we have to. Uh, so sort of delay one or delay the other one. We know that camp needs to be open uh, mm -hmm. for the twenty, the week after the seventeenth, I believe. Lessons are beginning. I don't remember which of the two pools lessons take place in that first week, but uh, I think it's war. I haven't heard anything about changing those? I think it's war. I haven't heard anything about changing about staggering those dates. Uh, okay. One or the other. So we are looking, um, I'll let Denise describe this in May, I guess, but um, we are looking at trying to get a little bit of an expanded base out at Hampshire and use, there's like a, 
a marriage waiting for us out there. Hampshire is looking for somebody to come in and do some in, do some instruction for some of the people that that they have that, that constituents, the constituents constituents that use that pool and are looking to use that pool when the students leave. And we have the need of trying to find some some uh, pool hours. And so we're working on it. They've been terrific partners for us as we went through the through the so-called off seasons with. Uh, with our master swimming courses. And we really think that that's a relationship that we want to try and keep building and giving us giving us uh, more capability to not be dependent on the clothes and the very narrow sort of uh, uh, facilities that we have here. Uh, more options is always good. Any questions on pavilions or pools? Those are the big opening dates for this for this season. Staffing, moving through. Staffing, I can basically sum it all up by saying, uh, need a nap. Um, we are filling three positions right now. We hired in what we, what we think is gonna be a terrific summer camp director, uh, and she starts tomorrow. Uh, a young woman named Ashley Ugolini, she starts tomorrow, so I am going to be here early to sort of get her situated. And and get her up to speed on where we are with with filling those filling her staff filling the the camp situations there. We have one open uh, position when we lost our outstanding registration supervisor Diane Wheeler went across town. Uh, she is now in, at town hall and we're filling that position. So people who have used our front desk and know Diana and know how much she brought to our office. We are in the process of filling that position. We have a couple of candidates that we're looking at, but but that is that's a registration position. The, the place where I want to just mention to you all that we could use your help, perhaps we have since I decided I wanted to make this pitch at this meeting, we have gotten a couple of interesting references. And so it's not that we don't have anybody for it, but Nikki Abelli's, the rest of Nikki Abelli's position, uh, uh, she was summer camps and she was outreach special events. The summer camps is being taken care of in a seasonal position. We are filling uh, Nikki, my rock star's position uh, uh, with, uh, with a program director. And that program director is going to be in charge of our, basically, uh, uh, you know, the, the outreach special events going to be in charge of of our licensing of after school of our child care of our of, of those programs and also going to be doing some of our marketing in our program. So we are looking for a dynamic individual who can who can do some of what we looked at with Nikki, but would be able to be creative and making a position, building a position back up to where we had before I was here, but building a position back up in its usefulness and in its utility for the department of the town. I think it's an important position for me as a director, but it's a but it is something that if people know, uh, you know, outgoing planners, uh, people who have uh, have or are interested in marketing and business connections and basically promotion of our department, this is this is a position that I'm excited to be looking for. Uh, so just as a as a plug, there, you can send them to me. You can send them to uh, to the rec to, to the rec department here office and of the HR, we have a position open for our outreach. Um, and so that's for our own staff, uh, July 4th committee. We have started in earnest at building a July 4th uh, committee, the one inside our town with different departments here. And we are working on our sponsorship outreach. We're working on some of those things that that I need a nap uh, that I'd love to have an outreach director here for to be working with. Uh, but the uh, July Fourth committee, we were already dividing up a bunch of the responsibilities, and then another committee that that committee, myself and Marion, are going to be connecting with the UMass team, various departments at UMass who are responsible for you know, building and, and, and supervising and providing the facilities and resources for July 1st. Uh, it says July 4th committee, the, uh, 
uh, the event is on July 1st, is on Saturday, July 1st on the, on the University of Massachusetts, same spot uh, at the University of Massachusetts. Uh, our rain date is the following Saturday, the 8th. Uh, but we are building a, a program that we can hopefully be proud of. We got a bunch of people working to try and uh, make up for the pieces that we did not have last year. And I don't want to spend any time thinking about that right now. Um, but I'm excited about that opportunity. Uh, and moving, how am I doing? Catching up, all right. And moving into the commission recruitment. This is very easy. Thank you, Gene. Thank you, Jonas is still in our in our attendees right now. Uh, we have for the first time uh, a full commission, a full active commission. So, so that is outstanding. I, I tip my hat to all of you all. It's it's terrific. We Carolyn and I talked a little bit about this and that's the next phase, which I'm gonna hand over to her in a second. Uh, I think that this is a really, really exciting group of people here with various interests that are put together and with the intent of trying to find a bunch of different types of voices, a bunch of different uh, sort of niches in the community here and in recreation. Uh, so after that applause, we are losing two in a couple months. And so we are going to be back looking at put this in staffing and vacancies because we will be back. If you know people who are interested, we will be looking to fill two, uh, two seats here. Uh, we didn't get started until late last year when we were looking to fill uh, one open seat and then one opening seat. We didn't get started until late last year. So I do want to put that in your ears. I have a couple of people who, who I may be reaching out to and looking at, but if you, we would love to have options to put in here also. So share just how, uh, how tame of a director I am and how much, how little I make your lives hell uh, and how much more I could make it hell if you ask, ask me nicely. Uh, I will turn over now to the recommission piece to Carolyn uh, about, we talked a little bit about what we think the recommission can be more than what it is right now. And so Carolyn would like to, to sort of put something on your radar. Uh, this started because someone who was <clears throat> interested in joining our commission called me and said, do you do anything besides youth sports? And I said, yeah, actually <laughs> we do a lot of other things. And, you know, she, I think she got this idea from looking at our previous agenda and you know we do a lot we spend a lot of time on different sports and we're all interested in youth sports so it's makes sense that it would be front and center but I thought you know we should look at the mission statement and see what we say we're here for because if we're going to recruit people to join us as a commission they're going to want to know and we don't have one um, and I looked at the other town committees and commissions and almost everyone has one so I pasted them together into a Word doc and sent it out to the reply all list here um, before the meeting. I don't know if it actually went to everybody or not. I think they were all BCC. I will share it with you all. Okay. okay. I'll get off here and I'll share it with you. Okay. Um, so a couple things. First, do we want a mission statement? Anybody have a feeling about that? Do you think we need one? think we need one okay I think it's good to have one but as part of the um the planning session that we did a few years ago just before pandemic didn't we create a document that has all of that information was it for recreation commission or for the recreation department oh I see yeah yeah that was department in general not the commission itself got it okay sorry right. Right when we were changing our identity program, we we right. did a lot of that thinking. But the commission itself, um, if you look at our part of the website, it's pretty unclear why we're here and what we do. And if you look at the other ones that I sent out, oops, hold on, bring in bird feeders. Um, if you look at the other ones that I sent out, people have things like, um, I mean, other groups say basic things like we work to um advise the town but also what they cover um what they're specifically doing now you know what, what they're here for and i feel like we could do that so the second part of my little message is 
Um, does anyone want to take that on as like just a draft thing before the next meeting, something to send out? Does that mean I have to? <laughs> I would do that if you don't if you want to send me that information. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, just see what everyone else says. I, I noticed there's very little consistency. The look is all different, no matter who you open, they're all different looking, the wording's different, the length is different, but I would think if you just read through those, you can get a pretty good idea of what, you know, someone that's coming in might need to see or might want to see. Mm -hmm. And then if you just draft up anything, it can be really loose and rough, at least give us something to look at. You know, sure. most of the people here have been on long enough to be able to say, um, yeah, here's how we describe that. So it doesn't need to be long. I just feel like it's kind of nice to yeah, have something like that. Where we're doing our mission statement at Mount Holyoke right now. It's like, it's just like very short. It's like- Perfect. From yeah, a yeah. paragraph like this, we've got it down yeah, to two exactly. lines. So. <laughs> Nobody wants to see paragraphs and paragraphs. So yeah, that would be great. Thank you, Jean. Um, let's see, I think that's, that's all I wanted to say about that. I so, did just share with you the, I just emailed all of you all at BCC, the, the uh, document that Carolyn sent earlier. The next thing is um, new commission business. Carolyn, if I Sanjay first. Uh, yes, I, Sanjay. So I've also occasionally talked to people interested in the commission. And one message I think we can send is that the commission does the things that the members of the commission are interested in. And that if a person is interested in forming arts or senior activities or adult continuing education, the fact that we are not currently spending much time on those issues, while it could reasonably be taken as a deterrent, also represents an opportunity, <laughs> right? That's a great point. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And in fact, I was going to say a good place to recruit from is like the sidelines, but that doesn't make sense because that means we're going to have duplicates of all of us. So a good place to recruit from is, well, for Yousef and me, maybe to replace ourselves with people on our, you know, in our interest groups. But think about those things like absolutely adult ed continue, you know, the, the, all the programs we've had in the past or uh, special events or any of those things would be really good to have a representative on the commission. So yeah, if anyone knows anyone else, think outside those little, our little gold boxes here. Sanjay, I'm, that, that quote is, is going to live with me as I try and, as I try and sell the idea of being the commission, the commission does what members of the commission are interested in. <laughs> that, that works for me. Yeah, the woman who contacted me was really wanting to get recreation facilities built in our town. And it's that's pretty appropriate, but um, it's a huge ask. And it's not something that when you get when you join the commission, you can get done within a year. So anyway, it's, I, I told her to get in touch with CPA <laughs> people. <laughs> Go bring the money. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? All right, moving on. Uh, so now, uh, if there's any new commission business, we can open that now if anybody has any new commission business. Again, on the July 4th thing, I will encourage you all to be as involved as you can be. I would love to have the commission, uh, if you want to be involved in the committee, I, I would love to have a commission representative in on all of our July 4th planning. If anybody would like to do that, again, contact me. I can plug you in. Those meetings are typically during the day and in person uh, for our, we basically are meeting right now on Friday afternoons. I don't know how long that, that lasts. We are, if anybody would like to sort of have a commission interest in here, because you are a body that does not work for me. Uh, you're a body that I don't work for. Uh, if you would like to, as a rec commission, be involved in that, in that big community event planning process, I would welcome you at a seat, at a seat at the table with me. Um, so that's that, that extended commission business. I had a question. So for your rec department, 
Do you have internships like as a way to maybe have people help you <laughs> since you're low on? We that? don't have internships. We have we some of our volunteers as we as we put together a team of volunteers that need we need to carry out an event like this. Uh, a bunch of them will be people who have been volunteers or part-time employees for us in sport in after school. Our after school basically becomes, uh, not after school, our summer camp uh, workers uh, become volunteers for us for July 1st. So we use the folks that we have here, but we don't have a set internship program. I think with the what you know what the college is and all the students. I mean, that seems like it'd be a great opportunity for someone who's looking to get into the field. Right. Um, um, well, we we do reach out to them for volunteers for our other planning. We will be reaching out to the colleges for volunteers for this. We don't have an extended program that that rolls over into uh, our July first planning, our July fourth uh, celebration. But we we use the colleges for a lot of our for a lot of our after school summer camp the coaching clinics uh, um, the coaches themselves. Uh, I would be happy to reach out to anybody that that has a that has a uh, a wealth of people at, at, uh, that are that are available for us. So we we've. Uh been successful in finding a couple of interns for the baseball program through the sports management program at UMass. And there is a woman, a faculty member who is, her job is to help arrange internships for the students. Um, they've been good. Uh, the One of the issues of course, is that they're gone by the middle of May. That's <laughs> right. So their utility for your prime time season is gonna be minimal. If you have that contact, uh, yeah. I, we might have the same similar contacts, but if you have a uh, contact that we haven't used, then please feel free to send it to me. I will. Okay, so next meeting date, we are right now at the end of April. Um, uh, for our May meeting, does anybody have a problem with, with having a late May mid to late May, does Monday still work for folks? I can't do, that's Memorial Day is the last Monday in April. So we'd have to go before that, the 22nd. I am bringing Jonas in to, uh, I'm allowing Jonas to talk right now. Uh, I, I should just promote him to a full panelist and cheat for a second, but I have Jonas here. If Jonas, you have any input on the next meeting, we anticipate you will be there. Uh, everybody say hi to Jonas. Hi, Jonas. Hi, hey, everyone. How are you? <laughs> Am I a text box? You are a text box. Yes, you box. are. Okay. <laughs> because I follow yeah. rules. You never looks better, Jonas. <laughs> I was waiting for that one. We could just meet um, on our corner like Andy and Jonas and I. We got to live like <laughs> exactly. yeah. all right here. <laughs> play telephone with the, yeah. uh, the cans and the string. Um, I'm... <laughs> Let's see, my my summer's pretty open. So, okay. yeah. Nice. So the 22nd is a Monday near the end of May. Does anyone have a conflict with that? The only thing I will say is just the, the hurricane boosters typically meet on Mondays also, I think at like 5.30. I'd love, to, I mean, since certainly they're, they're doing some work relative to the turf project, I'd love to, yes. be able to participate a little, so. Monday could still work, but I don't know whether um, people I guess, mind if I show up late or if you know would be up for pushing things back thirty minutes. I assume that you were probably getting making use of some daylight hours on lacrosse field. Uh, I, I was tonight, yeah, and the the that meeting got pushed to tomorrow. But I don't have a problem with with delaying the start until seven. We've done seven at different times of the year. Uh, and I think that people kind of move towards six o'clock, but again, this is your, uh, if it fits you all, seven o'clock is not a problem for me. I try, I know today is the wrong example, but I try to hold pretty tight to a pretty quick schedule. Um, and so I don't intend to be here um, 
beyond the time that we sort of sort of allot for. And, that would I, be seven on the twenty second. We try for seven o'clock on the twenty second. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. That works um, for me. So I just have another thing. Is normally we get a little introduction. We didn't get an introduction from Gene or Jonas as to uh, like what your specific interests are. are. And I, I forgot. I was I had planned on doing that, but I realized today that Gene was probably going to be here today, and New Jonas wasn't going to be. Uh, we could take that time now, or we could plan a great big uh, introduction. Uh, we do an email introduction between now and next meeting, or we could start with introductions for our two new members next time. Or we could do it right now if you want to. We could have you all. I'd rather be able to plug Jonas in when we can see him. We could do Gene now and Jonas next time. How's we'll do that? Gene now. Uh, Gene, tell us what brings you to <laughs> Amherst Recreation. Um, well, um, so I'm from Chicago originally, so I'm from Big City, but I lived in La Crosse, Wisconsin for several years. And we had a very vibrant um, rec department and just activities for the kids and just not just for the kids, but just for the whole community, um, you know, public pools. And it's, just, it's a very vibrant community. It's about a 50,000 um, population. so a little smaller than Amherst. But I was when I came and moved here about nine years ago, I was just surprised as the lack of, I think, opportunities for <laughs> the community for the kids for adults and really just want to be involved with that I'm also I'm a Spanish professor so uh, I have the bilingual background and bicultural and I think we have a growing uh, Hispanic population um, in the area and I think it would be nice to kind of tap on that as well and um, get our Latino community uh, more involved so I don't know I think uh, I'm excited to to work with you all and I mean, I've seen a lot of nice things already happen since I've been here in the nine years, which has been great. Um, but of course, there's always, <laughs> always lots to do and um, just happy to be here and give my uh, thoughts and <laughs> um, ideas and try to make things happen. Great. Glad to have you. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thanks for being here. And thanks for getting all that taken care of so quickly after the appointment. Um, yeah. We will, the bar is set nice and high for Jonas come May. We're going to have him on camera. We're going to have him. Uh, uh, nobody's allowed to leave between now and then. <laughs> we want to we're gonna make sure that we have that full seven bases here for the first time. Do you all ever meet in person? Is it always on Zoom now? Or We, we talked about that last time, and we thought, um, no. <laughs> we thought maybe, like, for a end of the season um gathering and yeah. also for Yusuf and I to say goodbye or you to say goodbye to us we might try to do something whether it's a meeting or just like a get together for something else but maybe we'd like to try that. And look at, as we as Yusuf and Carolyn do phase out I'd like to try and get together yeah that would be nice maybe we could um in May we'll figure that out and do it in June something like that okay and what's the best way for me to get an email address so I can send Jonas and Jean the minutes? I will send those to you right now also. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. Sound good? Okay. Beautiful. So again, sorry. It, it actually wasn't as far over as I thought it was, but okay. um, I apologize for going over a little bit here. It was ambitious for me to get down. Our last March meeting was. Uh, majestic one hour and five minutes and i thought hey i gotta try and <laughs> we try and keep this going uh we need a, we need a pitch we need a pitch clock right <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right do they, do they um, use those in pickleball <laughs> oof i don't think so um ray are yes. would you be able to stay on for five minutes so i could just yeah. chat about yeah. some of the things i talked about with jose i don't know if that's misappropriation of an open meeting zoom link or not but 
<laughs> if so, I we can we can meet offline or something. No, we can we can, we can take a vote to make sure that it's okay. <laughs> I, think, I think when Carolyn ends the meeting, you'll just stop recording and then that'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So if you can just stay on the Zoom link, I won't take too much time, right? Oh, not a problem. Yeah. Well, nice to meet y'all. I'll see you next time. A motion to adjourn the meeting. Yeah. So moved. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Good night. Okay, thanks, everyone. Bye, all. Bye. Bye.